Hello everybody. Today I'm here with Dominic Pratt, our global president of Cow Salon Division. Hi Dominic. Hi Elmer. Dominic, we would like to talk a little bit about sustainability, our vision, what we have achieved and uh, what's in front of us. But before we're going deeply into that, everybody has a personal insight into sustainability. So what is your insight as a private person in your private life? What role does sustainability play here? In my spare time, I mean, I'm someone who loves being outdoors. I love doing sport. My, my hobby is triathlon. So I do spend a lot of time, you know, outdoors. And I've become, you know, it's become very obvious to me how much the climate has changed. You know, whether it's just much harder to run in the hot weather in the summer than it used to be, or the seasons have shifted, tra changing the training times. Um, all these things have made me really notice. And I think that's also focused my mind on the need to do something to, to, to change and, and uh, deal with climate change. Dominic, we know each other for a long time and you have a long career in R&D. But now in September 2021, you became our president, president of Cow Salon Division. So with this combined background, what role does sustainability play for Cow and for our business, the professional business? I think sustainability is really central to almost everything we do. I mean, our mantra is sustainability is the only path. You know, we want to do the right thing, not the easy thing. And at Cal Salon Division, that's, that's no different. I mean, it's an integral part of our strategy, but also of everything that we do. And I remember a word from you. You are always talking about a journey. What does it mean, a journey of sustainability? I think the, the journey is really, you know, in Cal Salon, we have a un unique opportunity to combine, you know, sustainability with partnership. We have 40,000 salon partners throughout the world. So these small initiatives and contributions, if you do them together with 40,000 partners and if they can do it together with their, their clients, uh, these sort of small contributions become much bigger and much more significant. And I think that's, that's what we mean by this, this journey. I like the symbol because every journey has a departure. So what, what was the departure of Cow's journey into sustainability? Cow's journey really started right at the beginning. 130 years ago, there was no affordable soap for society in Japan, and Cow was the first company to do that. So their DNA is really about doing good for society and doing good for the planet. And I think Cow's salon division is, is no different. I mean, uh, KMS was the first company in the 70s to, to introduce a solid soap. I think it was 1976. So 1976, very early. a solid, solid shampoo. Goldwell had their own eco line, uh, Grundblatt, in the, in the 1980s. So ahead of their time, but it showed that this was really part of our DNA f since the beginning and not just something that we, we, we start recently. And I think I'm particularly proud of the role that the cow has played in Japan about such you know, package, uh, pouch packaging. I mean, now it's commonplace. But Cow really was at the forefront of developing such technology in Japan 20, 30 years ago and were really responsible for changing consumer behavior and, and people moving to pouch refills, which ultimately you know, is a 70 to 75 percent reduction in plastic usage. Wow, I mean, these are big numbers. And I have been a couple of times in Japan. You see that really in the drugstores, everywhere pouches. Yeah, so and that's all down to Cow's technology and their drive to do something good for the planet. When we just look back for the last couple of years, so going back to Cow's Salon Division, what do you think, what did we achieve, and where are we standing now as Cow and as Cow Salon Division? Yeah, I think I'm very proud of what we've achieved in, in Cow Salon. For example, all of our production uh, utilizes 100% uh, climate neutral energy. Um, we've reduced energy consumption generally by 30% since 2010. Uh, waste water we've reduced since 2016 by 12%. We've moved completely to sustainable renewable paper uh, since 2015. And we, were, we, we stopped animal testing uh, in the 80s uh, on our products long before any regulations were introduced. On the packaging and the product side, of course, we've also done a lot. Um, just for example, I mean, we talked earlier about cows leading role in packaging technology. So we've been able to profit from that and develop professional pouch solutions. Here you see KMS, Silk Lift, uh, Structure and Shine, 
and there will be more examples in the future. And we have also Orbe, Orbe, Orbe also introducing their, their, their power tree fill concept as well. Another example, for example, on the packaging side is we continually reduce the amount of aluminium. Aluminium is a very energy uh, intensive raw material. So again, everything we can do to reduce, and this is an example with, with KMS, uh, where we can significantly reduce the amount of amount aluminium in the packaging. I have calculated that per year we are saving 1.4 tons of aluminium by yeah. this switch to lightweight packaging. So this is a lot because with this we are saving for KMS a lot of the environmental footprint and lowering the carbon footprint. Yeah, and as we heard before that the refill packaging can save up to, up to 70% pack, uh, plastic material. And also lowering the carbon footprint compared to bottles by 60%. So exactly. That's, yeah, that's great. Um, but second priority is after reducing packaging material is supporting circular economy. So reusing materials. So increasing the amount of recycled plastic. And that's what we are doing on, on a lot of products. So for example, here the, the Goldwell Serum Sprays. The bottles are consisting of 50% recycled plastic and in, in, in came as conscious style in the range. Sometimes the packaging has up to 98% recycled plastic in the packaging. So this is a lot. Yeah, that's great. And you can see how much we're doing on the packaging, but it doesn't stop there. It's also what's, what's inside. So for example, many of our formulas are already vegan. Absolutely. Uh, and we're switching a lot of our production to cold batch. Uh, so adjusting the formula so they can produce cold to save energy as well. That's an important aspect of, of cold production, but in formulas as well, you know, as a chemist, we are trying to increase the amount of natural ingredients and ingredients that are biodegradable step by step. And again, I can name uh, Conscious Style. Um, the multi-benefit spray has up to 98% of natural biodegradable ingredients. So this is a great achievement. Yeah, it is, yeah. So, I guess we all agree we are on the right path, but I think we also agree there is so much more to do. And that brings me to an important question to you. Where do you, as a president, see our challenges in order to follow our sustainable path and to make the world a little better? Yeah. We talked about sustainability as being a journey. And, and we, we know that there's still a long way to go. And we set ourselves very challenging targets internally. Um, but also, you know, the UN or, or various uh, governments and authorities around the world are also setting challenging targets. And I think, you know, if we look holistically, uh, climate neutrality will be one of the big, uh, one of the big challenges for, for us and, and, and everyone. And, you know, really our approach to climate neutrality is, you heard all of the great things we're doing with production, uh, with the packaging, with the formulas, but still, technically, it's not possible to come down to zero emissions. So our approach is not as an alternative. We continue to do everything we can on the packaging, on the formula, on the production, on our facilities. But at the same time, anything that's technically not possible to get down to zero, uh, we will utilize you know, compensation through climate neutrality to make sure that we're doing something good to remain neutral overall. So we're doing that on top. It's a voluntary effort in addition to reducing our carbon footprints. And Dominic, you teased already a little bit about the future. So what will the future bring in terms of sustainable product initiatives that we will introduce to our partner salons? There's a lot in the pipeline. Um, so here we see the, the patch technology for, for KMS. This will we'll be expanding out to all of our brands. Um, also, I'm very excited about uh, introducing a back bar concept for the, for the, based on the, on the pouch refill. Very interesting. Uh, we will also be launching uh, Topshik Zero in the near future. Again, 100% recycled aluminium, 99% uh, recycled plastic cap. And we will continue our commitment to climate neutrality. So colorants is already climate neutral, yeah. but in the near future, Topshik Zero will be climate neutral, as will the new Kerasilk and Dual Sensors. That means then, with this, we will have nearly our entire portfolio uh, with products that are climate neutral then. So that's a big achievement, and I think this clearly underlines our commitment to climate neutrality. Dominic, I think we could continue talking about sustainability for hours, but let's come to an end. Um, I started our little talk with a private insight. 
into sustainability and you were talking about your training and being in nature. I would like to end this interview as well in a similar way. Are there any tips, is there anything that you do good or at home or at the training that you, that's worth sharing because it's a good example? Yeah, my, my tip really is, is, is all about trying as much as possible not to use the car. So for example, when I go to swim training, I, I'll cycle there and back, or if I go to the gym, I'll run there and back. And through that, that sort of led me to also cycle to the supermarket every week, uh, just with a, with a rucksack. Um, and the advantage there is A, I'm outdoors uh, more, B, I get an extra small training session in. And the final one is it makes me much more mindful to only buy what I really need and to avoid things with excess packaging. So I think with that, I mean, it's only a small thing, and that's really the message that, that we wanted to, to, to talk about was these small things in partnership with all of our salon partners. These small things can become much more significant and much more meaningful. I think this is a great final word. Thank you very much for your time, Dominique. Thank you, Armand. And thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>